Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of our request. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. And now let's start with the first story, shall we? It's called Owing Sense. This past July, I decided to move my cell service from Verizon to another carrier. The switch went fairly smoothly and I was even notified that I had a credit day returned to me. Fast forward to August and I received a bill from Verizon. The amount was a whopping one cent. Since I was no longer a Verizon customer, I couldn't fix this through their website. So I headed over to the local Verizon store and paid the bill. I even gave them the option of cash or debit card. I figured that would be the end of it. But no. In September, I received yet another bill from Verizon for one cent. That's when I decided to queue some light malicious compliance. I scheduled a payment for three cents and set it to recur every month until I get tired of it. Then, just for fun, I went back to the same company store and informed them of my plan. This month, I got an email saying I now have a credit of two cents. But here's the kicker. They'll still get another payment on October 30th and again after that until I'm satisfied this is resolved. I'm sure it's costing them a fair bit in processing fees. The next story is called Work Hours. A few years ago I worked as a nurse in Wales. There was a junior sister who was a rather odd woman. She had this habit of openly bullying some of the staff. For instance during handovers she would interrupt several times to tell us to be quicker, which ironically made the handovers take even longer. Eventually she was told that we could finish faster if we weren't being interrupted all the time. Now I didn't drive at the time, so I had to rely on the bus to get to work. One morning the bus was a bit late, which meant I was 5 minutes late for the start of my shift. The junior sister wasn't having it. She told me that I would need to either take 5 minutes off my already short 20 minute coffee break or work 5 minutes extra at the end of my shift. I was annoyed of course, since it wasn't my fault the bus was late. But she was adamant, reminding me that your working hours are from 7.30 am to 3 pm with one 20 minute break. Not wanting to miss my bus home, I reluctantly agreed to cut my break short. A few shifts later, I had some care plans to rewrite, as all notes at the time were handwritten. Since I had been frosty with the junior sister, keeping all our conversations strictly professional, I sat down to get on with my work. She came over and asked if I wanted a hand. I responded, if you'd like to, thank you. She took a bunch of care plans and disappeared into her office. Now, cue malicious compliance. Being on 3 p.m., I packed up my things, grabbed my coat and made a point of saying goodbye to her. She looked up and asked, where are you going? And I just replied, home. She reminded me she was still working on my care plans and asked if I could write a few to help her finish faster. I looked her straight in the eye and said, my working hours are from 7.30 to 3. I get no leeway when my bus is late so I will no longer be staying after my shift. I'll hand over any outstanding jobs to the next shift. With that, I walked off. I would love to say the look on her face was priceless, but I didn't stick around to see it. It was totally worth losing 5 minutes of my break just to stand my ground. The last story is called Midnight Meeting. I've been working as a lead in an IT firm from India that supports a US client. I have a manager here in India who approves my PTO, handles performance reviews and meets with us a few times a month. His and the management's view is that the work we do is for the client, but we should also contribute to the organization. So we are encouraged to take up additional tasks, like recruiting or preparing business reviews. Essentially, we need to be available during the day. I also have another manager in the USA who is Indian as well. He coordinates with the customer and handles any escalations related to our work. 
His main concern is ensuring there are zero escalations from the client. The clients are sign us projects and we interact with them directly. We have meetings every day, usually lasting at least two hours. Since we are paid a monthly salary, there's no extra money for additional hours worked. Both managers take advantage of this. There are no strict working hours, but we must be available from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. IST, which corresponds to 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. US time. Typically, we start working at 10 a.m., continue until 5 p.m., and then resume from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Sometimes, meetings with clients extend an extra 30 minutes to an hour. Our US manager connects with us after the meetings with the client. One day, I had a lot of work to finish and decided to work from home instead of commuting. I had a three-hour client meeting followed by a knowledge transition session, so I was fully occupied. The on-site manager asked me to schedule a meeting with him. I told him my day was packed till midnight. He refused and said he needed 30 minutes of my time. I asked if he could join a little earlier before my meetings. But he said no. Then I asked, is 12 a.m. fine for you? He said yes. And I scheduled a meeting at 12 a.m. All happened over Teams chat. I decided to take his own words against him. So I scheduled a meeting for 12 a.m. his time, which was 10 a.m. the next day for me. If you expect me to be available at midnight, why not you? That was the last time he expected me to be available past midnight. Thanks for watching the video to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. Also, if you want to support me further, check out the channel membership or Patreon. And now I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.